Hey guys, it's Beth Murphy. I have missed you. I promise I have missed you. And even though I'm not in a hundred percent good mood, <laughs> I miss you more than I think I will burden you. So I'm going to let myself talk to you. Um, it's raining. It's a little chilly. Um, I'm under my electric blanket. I have coffee. <laughs> so I can't really complain about much. But if you hear any craziness, the cats are getting a little antsy and they're chasing each other. So we're going to talk about um, today is moodiness, which, you know, I thought was pretty funny because I couldn't make you the video because I was too moody. <laughs> but there's more to it than that. And I found a fun way to talk about it. Um, I went on a hike, um, not with Jill this time, not with average, average Jill, but she, she influences me. And because she talks about hiking, I think about hiking, then I talk about hiking, and then my husband thinks about hiking, which is great. Now, he and I have been on hikes before, but it was so long ago. It was way too long ago. And he, you know, he's a sensor thinker. I'm talking about the Myers-Briggs and there's a test. If you open up the bottom under this video, I always keep a test there in case you don't know what this is. Um, if you're like me, you know, you're intuitive, um, you're feeling, you might not realize you're married to your opposite and you wonder why you guys speak different languages. So when I learned that, like concrete learned that, and then I had the language, um, it was very helpful to me. And I tried harder, you know. Um, so anyway, we did go on a hike and I'm gonna pepper in, I'm doing an audio now, I'm gonna pepper in those pictures. Because even the way that we took in the hike, we took it in differently. You know, because of his, the way he's wired, you know, these are the workers of the world. They're a big percent, but um, we can't all be visionaries. <laughs> Just to put that, uh, put that out there quickly. We, we can't all be us. You know, I think we're great. I would never change us. I'm honored to be me, um, and keep the company I keep with other people that are intuitive and, you know, sensitive and thoughtful people. But we can't all be like that. We can't, you know, not, we're not ready. So, to me, I always see it as like this divine perfection. You have a certain percent and that percent is getting bigger. I believe the intuitive feelers are getting bigger. And I'm going to start to do more videos about my metaphysical interests because when I'm not with you, that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, I do work here and there, but uh, I'm pretty much consumed from, by learning about metaphysical things. So I'm going to be talking about that because I think it concerns you even if you never thought about it. And some of you have. I know some of you have because I talk with you here and there. Um, but anyway, so back to moodiness. And um, again, we were taking the hike in differently. Maybe you've noticed this with other people. Are you the kind of person when, let's say you go to an event or you go to the park or you go to Disney World or somewhere that something's been prepared for you to walk through and to look at like the zoo do you want to read the signs that are there because i always do even when i was a little kid and my parents who were not like me i would believe me i was the only one in my family to be like me and you probably were too because we're on the rare side i always wanted to stop and read everything and i was so appreciative and I'm going to tie this back into today's theme from our countdown. I was so appreciative of everything someone created for me. I could feel everyone's intention. And it was beautiful to me. Um, even now, I'm getting pictures in my mind of Disney World when they would plant flowers and they would make pictures in the flowers with the colors. And I would even look at the posts because I read that they paint them like they strip them down and paint them every so often and and whatever music or colors or again you know you go to the zoo and I want to read about the animal like where are you going people just walking through <laughs> the sidewalks like don't you remember why you're here and 
you know how it is. They just, they're wired differently. They're on a mission. And that's how it was with my husband and I on the hike. Um, you know, I'm like looking at things, I'm taking pictures, and these would be the ones I'm going to pepper in later to show you um, just the kind of cool things that I was looking at. I mean, there were rocks that look like stuff. You know, I have fun. I'm like, Jill, this is what, you know, this is what we're made of. This is why I, I have her on with me, and I'm on her channel because we share this. But other people don't, and it's just so funny. That's why I hang out with you guys, because you, you bring me back to myself. And um, so we're having this different experience on the hike. And you'll see in the photos, he's always like way ahead of me. <laughs> it's not just because I'm out of breath, because I am sometimes, because it's kind of, can be kind of difficult. Um, but it's because he's on a freaking mission. You know, this is who he is. He's a performer. He's a doer. Um, this is how his brain is wired. You know, work, work, work. And I'm like making jokes. There was this, we passed the billboard about um, what to do if you see a bear. You know, you're supposed to like, well, you don't bother him you, and you back away. And, you know, there's a whole bear protocol and I, I'm reading it and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I know all that. And, and I go, I, I know what I'm going to do already. I'm going to panic and run. And, and then I just started laughing and laughing because... It was funny to me that the irony was funny to me and I'm laughing all the way on their walk back to the car and I'm like, and they're, they're spending all this money on bear awareness and they're making all these pamphlets and we're all doing the same thing. We're just going to scream and run, you know, and panic, you know, I don't know. I thought it was funny. I always think I'm funny and he just goes right over his head. <laughs> um, but I've noticed that about my other INFJ friends. It does not take much to laugh. And this is where I'm going to tie in our moodiness. I'm going to read this article to you because this was the dark side of the INFJ personality type. That's what we're doing here today. And we already talked about stubbornness, high expectations, and we're on moodiness. So that's what they're, that's what they're saying about us. Now, I'm going to come out with, yeah, I am moody, but I'm all over the spectrum. It includes both uh, the darker emotions and the lighter emotions. Can you see what I'm trying to say? The people like my husband, an example on that hike, they don't live on either side. They don't live the spectrum. They're not supposed to, they couldn't handle it. And they wouldn't be able to be hooked up with us if we were both doing that. You can only have a certain percent of people doing what we do, where we go visit these dark thoughts so we can expand further into the joyful thoughts. Now, you may or may not believe me, um, but if you continue to hang out with me, I will teach you more about those darker thoughts and how they could be a benefit to you. I know it might sound crazy, but trust me. I was in the depths of despair many, many, many years ago, and I truly understand. You, you may not believe me because you, you see me, I'm mostly happy, but it, trust me, it was, it was not good. Medication, everything, it was really dark. Um, but I see the greater purpose. This is part of my studies. And then after I saw it, it stopped happening. So yes, if we are moody, but it's because we have a large range and they don't. So we may appear quote unquote moody to them. So let me just read this quick because this is you know how we do things here and we'll see what they say. You can read along with me if you like. We know when to be on our best behavior, but honestly, we're often swayed by how we feel in the moment. INFJs may appear calm on the outside, even when inside we're a bundle of emotions. It's usually apparent when something is bothering us, but that doesn't mean we'll want to talk about it. INFJs can be guilty of pushing people away and throwing a pity party. Of course, we'd like someone to confide in, but more often than not, we feel that most people wouldn't understand us even if we did open up. Sometimes INFJs can be just as confused about their moods as others are. Often INFJs need time alone to sift through their emotions and understand why they are feeling the way they feel. If an INFJ does open up to you, 
They may even apologize for talking about their feelings. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> That's because we often keep things to ourselves to spare you the burden. However, the best thing you can do for an INFJ is to let them talk about something if they need to. INFJs usually feel better just being able to express their feelings and concerns. Don't judge, criticize, or offer solutions unless the INFJ directly asks you for help. Sometimes we need those practical solutions too. Try to listen and understand their feelings and maybe give them a hug. Sometimes all it takes is some love and encouragement for our moodiness to pass. Um, all right, so I already told you that I think we experience all of the moods, not just the darker ones. I am so much more inclined to laugh at stupidity than my very average husband. He is, now I'm the rarest personality like you. He is, um, you know, vanilla. <laughs> He's pretty, pretty average. That might even be the highest percent type. Um, so I find him to be pretty basic. He is just not willing to be a goofball. It's a rarity if I can get him to be goofy. Matter of fact, I'm reading a book my friend gave me. Jody, that would be you. Please Understand Me Too by David Kiersey, Temperament, Character, Intelligence. And this has a lot of the, the types. And for my husband, it says, it says skeptical, it says pessimistic. And I'm thinking, oh, so I don't have to feel guilty for telling him that. Because I would just flat out tell him and then I would hurt his feelings, which I do feel bad about. But you know how we are with blurting out things that are obvious to us. And I didn't, I didn't mean it hurtful. I just was trying to kind of point out, like, you could choose not to be pessimistic. Um, but, you know, the reason they do those things is to protect themselves. So they try to exercise more compassion, be more patient with other people. Um, so moodiness, what would, what would I want if I was moody? Um, I probably want to be left alone. Yes, for sure. Um, but if I trust you and you approach me the right way, I would want you to ask me if I'm okay or if I need anything. And then you, you just hit the ball over in my court and then I'll take it from there. But I don't know that that can't be said for a lot of types. You know, like I'm pretty comfortable with who I would consider my, my peers or people people in my inner circle, I don't think they can have a bad way of approaching me because I, I know that they care about me. So it's certainly to feel cared about um, is important. And actually I've read that about our type. Like my husband's type, gratitude is important to him. And that's funny because I have heard him say that before. Like all the work, when I say work, 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 that's what that type does, they produce. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for gratitude. And I found that fascinating. Um, I try to implement that into our lives together where I um, just tell him directly, you know, I appreciate this or I'm grateful for that. So yes, yes, I'm moody, but I am capable of so many um, so so many emotions that other people aren't and you know great empathy and intuition and I'm just turned on I'm dialed on I'm dialed on and I'm reading everything so of course I'm going to be prone to moods that only that only makes sense so yes i'm moody what else what else you have to say about me <laughs> uh-oh <laughs> number four being too harsh okay well we're gonna have to do that one soon yeah definitely i'm probably that too all right guys so thanks for hanging out with me um i'm gonna do more of my metaphysical videos because that's what i'm doing in my free time all i'm doing right now is learning about the energies coming in because as an empath I, I can feel stuff and then I'll go seek out um, avenues that I trust of information and then it resonates, I'll take it in. But right now, 
there's a lot of stuff that's going on. You don't have to know about it, but there's a lot of changes coming. And I, I can feel them. I, I'm, I don't even have to tell you so-and-so said it. I say it. And because I can feel them, I'm compelled to do the research that I do. So I probably will want to start sharing some of that with you. Part of the reason I wanted to make this channel is because I knew intuitive feelers would get it. And whenever I'll, I go to these different sources that I have and I'll check out the comments, they're all people that are scared or, you know, they they know about some of the things that I'm, I'm trying to lead into here with you, but they'll turn them bad or scared or they'll feel like everyone's against them or um, I just want to smooth a lot of that over because where we're going is a really great place. But it's a bumpy ride to get there the, with the world changes. It's like right now things are going to start to erupt before they get better. We have to um, shine a light on all, all the ugliness. It has to come to the surface. So I kind of feel compelled to talk about that. So I'll put that under my metaphysical topic though. So if you don't, you don't dig it, you don't have to watch it. All right. So that's that. I hope you guys are doing very, very well. And I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye.